The Dual Mold Hybrid Grass Jig Mold is one of the most versatile jigs that you can make yourself. That's why when this mold came out in the middle of 2022, it became one of the most popular jig molds out on the market. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make these jigs at home yourself with the Dual Mold Hybrid Grass Jig Mold. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video for anybody new. I am Matt Loon, I've been making my own tackle for years now and I've got a ton of other tackle making videos on the channel. So if you're into tackle making, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This hybrid grass jig mold comes in a four cavity mold, makes jigs from three eighth ounce all the way up to three quarter ounce, basically has all your different depth ranges covered. Whenever you're making jigs, you definitely need something that's gonna melt down the lead for you. I like to use the Lee Production Pot 4 and I also like to preheat my molds and a lot of times I'll just set the mold on top of my Lee Production Pot 4. It gets that mold nice and hot and makes it easier for me to get complete pours right away. This mold calls for the Victory 10886 hook and the three aught to five aught. It also has a built-in slot for the lure eyes and you're gonna need a size four. There's gonna be some other common items that you're gonna need to finish up these jigs. I got a whole product list down in the description of today's video to get you completely dialed in on everything you're gonna need to make these jigs. The first jig that we're gonna make today is the three eighth ounce version of the hybrid grass jig. First thing I'm gonna put in is my base hole pin and then my three aught victory hook. This three eighth ounce size calls for the three aught hook. It falls over on the side like that, but it's not gonna be a problem once we close our mold up. And this is the size that people have been having problems with, with the bait keeper that's built in to the head of the jig. So I'm gonna spray some blaster dry lube into the mold and it should help us out. It doesn't take a lot of the blaster dry lube to get everything to free up inside the mold. So we're gonna get it all set up and we're gonna get our lead to go in, just like so. Doesn't take very much. And now we're gonna check out our jig. So it's time to open up the mold and check out our jig. As you can see, we got a nice complete pour. That blaster dry loop does help. It's not a sponsored product, just something that I found that I think will help you guys out. So we're gonna get rid of our 3 8 ounce jig and set it aside. And then we are gonna start making a half ounce jig. It's gonna be in this third slot right here. I'm gonna put our victory hook in there and that's gonna be the four rot size. And then we're gonna put our base hole pin in. And now we are going to close up our mold. And you want to always check to make sure everything's flush right here on top so that way you don't have any flashing. Now we're going to pour our half ounce jig. You want to get everything nice and hot. I like to check for a flow. We got good flow. Go right into our jig mold. Make sure everything fills up good. Let it sit. Now we're going to check it out. Okay, so now we're going to open up the mold. Check out that half ounce version of the hybrid grass jig and it turned out really, really well. That bait keeper turned out good, everything filled out well, and that's gonna make a killer jig. Anytime you make jigs, you have this leftover part, which is called the sprue. So you're gonna take a pair of shears or cutters, however you wanna call them, and you're gonna cut that off. Sometimes you have a little bit of flashing over the hook, so you wanna check everything out, make sure there's no adjustments or cutting that you need to do to clean everything up. Pretty simple process, is just trim everything up to make everything look nice. Now we're gonna do it to the 3 8 one. Cut off that sprue. Look to see if there's anything we need to trim up. Looks like there's a little bit on the corner right here. The next thing I always do is I take a file and I file down where that sprue was just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Just makes your jig look a little bit better. Now we're gonna do it to the next one. Sometimes you wanna check out your keeper right here, see if there's anything you need to file down or on your skirt collar or anything like that. This one right here, could file something down, doesn't take a lot, but now we are ready to go. We're gonna paint these things here in a second. What you're looking for when you file this down is just a nice smooth bottom where that sprue was, just like this jig head has now. You want it to be nice and smooth because it'll make your paint just look so much better. So now it's time to paint these jigs. We're gonna be using Protec powder paint. That's the paint that I like to use. We're gonna be using the tilapia color, which is gonna be a great shad color. And then we're also gonna be using a purple called Bruise Gill. It's got purple with green flake in it. It's gonna be a great June bug imitation. Gonna be great in dirty water scenarios when you're trying to imitate a bluegill. When you're using the paint in the cups, you definitely need to shake everything up really, really well to loosen up the paint inside the cup or else you're not gonna get good coverage on your jig. For the bruised gill color, we're gonna be using a fluid bed, which is my recommendation. The fluid bed has air that's pumped into a cup of powder paint and it keeps everything nice and loose inside of that cup and you're gonna get good even coverage and you're gonna be able to do a lot of jigs without having to stop and shake up your Protec powder paint cups. 
To paint these jigs, you're gonna need to heat that lead back up a little bit using something like a heat gun. For this 3 8 ounce jig that we're gonna be painting in the tilapia color, you're gonna to wanna to heat it up for around a 15 count once that heat gun has heated up internally. And then you're gonna dip that jig inside of the powder paint swish it around in there quickly, maybe a one or a two count, and then get it out and you're gonna wanna bang off the excess powder paint so that way everything dries evenly on the head of that jig. So something you need to do right away after you paint these jigs is get that base hole pin out. And I just take a pair of pliers, wiggle it around, and take that base hole pin out. If you don't do it soon enough, you will end up cracking the paint and you'll have to repaint everything, get that paint off and then repaint. Now we're about to paint the other jig in the bruised gill color using the fluid bed, the fluid bed set up behind me. I really like using the fluid bed. I just think it makes the whole process a little bit easier. You still need to heat up that jig 15, 20, 25 count with the heat gun or some other heat source. Then you're gonna dip that jig into the fluid bed and swish it around in there for one or two count, get a nice good coverage and then get that jig out of the powder paint and then get that base hole pin out quickly as well so you don't end up having that paint dry around the head of the jig and the base hole pin. And then when you go to remove the base hole pin, you end up cracking that paint off the head of the jig. The next step in the process with these jigs is to clear out any excess paint out of the eye of the hook. You don't want to paint these with a bunch of paint in the eye of the hook because then it can just close up the entire eye of the hook and you got nowhere to put your line when you go to fish these. So you need to take an eye buster tool, which is what I typically use, but the eye buster tool doesn't work the best on these hybrid grass jigs. So I just use an old hook point and then clear out all the paint out of there. So that way when I bake these and all that paint starts to melt and get all solid in inside the oven, I have a nice opening for my line to go through when I go to fish them. When I bake my jigs to get that powder paint nice and durable. I like to do it two different times and I put them in there for 20 minutes at 350 degrees inside of a toaster oven. I just feel like doing it that second time just makes that paint just a little bit more durable. We're about to make the skirts for these jigs, put the eyes on and put that weed guard on and have them all finished up. But before we get to that, let me know what you guys think about these jigs so far, what you think of this mold and how well you think it's gonna fish. Let me know that down in the comments section. And also guys, don't forget about the product list and the link that I have to the Dual Molds website down in the description of today's video. If you're gonna go buy anything as a result of this video, please use that Dual Molds affiliate link so they know that I sent you. If you've been liking this video, make sure to give it a like. And then if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, so now it's time to make up some of these jig skirts. Uh, the jigs are in the toaster oven baking right now, and we're gonna make the two different color jig skirts. And we have a June bug color, a green pumpkin purple color, a white, and then iridescent blue with a pepper kind of a color. What I'm gonna do is I have my skirt collars right here, rubber skirt collars. I'm gonna put them on my little tool. And the first color I'm gonna make is the bluegill color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear apart these jig skirts and put them in half. It doesn't have to be exact, but you just want it kind of in the middle. Set it aside and I'm gonna do the same thing with our June bug color. Now my skirt collar is already on my tool, so I'm gonna open up the tool. And then I'm gonna take the first green pumpkin color and put it through my tool. And then I'm gonna take one of the June bug colors and put it through. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the green pumpkin one again. And then we'll do it with the last remaining June bug color. And one thing I like to do before I tighten everything up is I wanna make sure everything's even. So I just pull all these skirt tabs together and I just get everything nice and tight so everything should flow evenly when everything's done. And then I just close up my tool, pull everything off, and now we have one skirt ready to go. Now it's time to do the shad color. So as you can see, we have all these little ends that are connecting all of our individual pieces. So what we need to do is take a pair of scissors and just cut those tabs loose. And now everything's gonna flow nice and freely. Sometimes you have a couple that are left over and connected, you just separate them. But now this skirt is gonna be ready to go onto our jig once it's done baking. And we're gonna do the same thing with the bluegill color. And now our bluegill color skirt is ready to go as well. So both of our jigs are done. We're gonna put the skirt on our shad colored one first. And the first thing you need to make sure of when you're putting on your jig skirts is that the skirt collar needs to be offset. And you're gonna take the, the hook point and you're gonna go down into that shorter side. And you're just gonna feed that skirt on to the head of the jig, similar to like rigging a swim bait almost. And you're just gonna push everything on there all the way up to the top of that skirt collar built into the jig, get everything nice and smoothed out. 
And there you have it. You have your jig almost all ready to go. So now it's time to repeat that process over again with our bluegill colored jig head, this purple one. Slide it into the short side, work the skirt all the way up till it reaches the top of the skirt collar built into the jig. All the way up. And now our bluegill color is just about finished. I think the jigs are turning out really well. We got our shad one in the 3 8 ounce and we have the bluegill color in the half ounce. We just need to put the weed guard in and then we also need to put the lure eyes on. For today's video, we're gonna be using Dual Molds Lure Eyes. This gold color is the Attack Series Lure Eyes and then we have the Hyper HD Lure Eyes from Dual Molds that are gonna be going on our bluegill pattern. There's gonna be a link to the Dual Molds website in the description of today's video along with a product list. So it's time to put the weed guards and the eyes on. So for this first green pumpkin swim jig, we're gonna be using a green pumpkin color weed guard. Just dip it into our two-part epoxy. Just using Gorilla, Go Gorilla Glue two-part epoxy. We're gonna slide that weed guard right in. It doesn't take a lot of epoxy to get that going. And then we're gonna use a black weed guard for our shad color. Slide the weed guard in. Just want to push it all the way down inside. Make sure it's snug, and it is. So now it's time to put the eyes on. When I put eyes on my jigs, I like to set them up side by side and do one side of the jig head at a time. And I just take a toothpick and I dab a little bit of that epoxy right where the eye is gonna go. It doesn't take very much. Less is honestly more in this kit situation. And then I take a pair of tweezers, just like you see right here, and I'm gonna get this first eye positioned on there. Just like that. So the first eye that I chose for the swim jig, that, or the grass jig that's gonna have the shad color, was too big, so we're putting the next size down on. Same exact design, same exact eye, it's just one size down. And set that on there, it'll go on this jig a lot better. You have this jig with the eye on for the shad color one, and now you have the eye on for the bluegill color one. These hybrid grass jigs can be dragged, they can be flipped, they can be pitched, they can be swam. And don't forget about the product list that I have down in the description of today's video. And if you guys wanna see me make some football jigs with my favorite dual mold, make sure to click on the video right now and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.